Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fabulous and fantastic Ask an Engineer. We're broadcasting live here from the Adafruit Warehouse Factory in West Soho, downtown Manhattan. I'm Lady Ada. Somehow I am the engineer. And with me is Phil. Somehow, you spent your whole life on it. I hope you're... Well, I'm, just, I'm just still the engineer, um, but I have a robot with me. Yeah, Hal's a special guest tonight. Special guest Hal. Hal, what do you think about being on the show? I just picked up a bolt in the AE35 unit. Oh, man. Okay. Well, hey, you got to AE35. You know, I got I got the AE35 unit on Deal Extreme. That was such a mistake. I know. Yeah, All right, anyways, uh, we got an exciting show tonight. Yeah. All sorts of stuff, lots of new products. Tell them what's on tonight's show, Phil. On uh, tonight's show, the code is CERN, 10% off everything in the native fruit store that we have in stock. Certainly. Yeah. Including well, MakerBots? Yeah, maybe. We'll talk about the Adafruit Six Second Electronic Film Festival. We will talk about the show and tell all the folks that were on there. We'll have bits of news from around the world. We'll have Pack at the Mailbag. We'll have stuff from the Adafruit Learning System. We'll have Wearable Wednesday. We'll have 3D Thursday. We'll have Pi Day. We'll stop in the community corner. We'll have new products. We'll answer your questions. We'll have a trivia question. All that and more on... Ask an engineer. engineer. All right. Okay. We are I'll show here. A bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's tonight, we're in the 3D printing area of Adafruit. So we're printing. <laughs> otherwise known as this table. <laughs> also, otherwise known as the place where we store like our 3D printers. So we have a MakerBot 2 Adafruit edi edition. And an um, original replicator. And an original replicator. We got an up somewhere. We got another one. We got some, uh, some other stuff over there. Um, so, uh, speaking of, the code is CERN, 10% off everything that's in stock in the Adafruit store, and we'll get to this in a bit, but I will say this, if you're ever thinking about getting a MakerBot Replicator 2 3D printer, um, we have... When should you do it? Well, we have, um, just a few left in stock, and this is the limited edition Adafruit edition. So, here's what you would get if you use the CERN code. Tonight, okay. you get uh, 10% off. 10% off. You get the 3D printing pack kits. Including? Um, Raspberry Pi, Minty Boost, and a Times Square watch. And then you also um, get free UPS ground shipping if you're in the U.S. That's five things. So it's actually not a great deal for us. But we're doing this because, you know, we thought it would be fun to have the 3D printers in with the, the coupon code because we can exclude items, but so we're keeping it in there. So if you're ever thinking about it, now um, is the day. This is it. And we don't know how much longer that we're going to do uh, the, the limited edition, edition yeah. Adafruit ones. Um, they sell out very quickly. Um, and we have. But we just got in some on Friday. We got some in on Friday. They go really quick. So, anyways. Yeah. Now is the chance. All right. Have you been waiting for one? Yeah. And okay. You, and you also you get it immediately. You'll ship on Monday or Tuesday because. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, keep, we, you, we you, keep them in stock. We have, these are in stock, actual, in existence, over there, big pile. If you buy them from other places, it might take four to six weeks. Yeah, you have to uh, Here, you'll actually get it, like, this next week, you'll get it on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Earlier. So, um, let's, okay. um, let's the do show, well, let's do show and tell, yeah, the code is certain. Let's do okay. show and tell stuff. So, show and tell, okay, awesome show and tell. night, um, Lady Ada, go over, okay. uh, who showed up on the show and tell? We had, uh, Mike showed up with his Johnny Carson turbine robot it's a it's a robot face with like a moving yeah, mouth yeah the great and, carmack for the people out there um which i don't know before your time before but johnny time. carson would have uh, an envelope that would he'd put up to his head and he would guess something and it'd be funny because the answer wasn't what the question was and it was uh very entertaining yeah, at the time and ed mcmahon would go oh, oh, oh yes sir yes you really like this ed mcmahon thing anyways yeah. it was really cool um and uh he also showed us some explorer stuff he's been working on he's been hacking on the uh LCD TFT library. Uh, Chris Young showed up again with an IR library tutorial. He's been doing a lot of hacking with Python yeah. and IR. He has libraries. a cool library that just uh, yeah to to make it easier to integrate um, like TV remote control type data handling in Python. And then Kevin came back and showed um, uh, as rainbow badges he made. He made these little like at Mega at so AT Tiny. Um, like NeoPixel badges using like the NeoPixel strip we have yeah. um, for uh, a gay pride parade that his wife is marshalling in, and so they're gonna everyone's gonna get these little rainbow badges because the example code that we wrote for them is like 
really rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you got RGB LEDs, you got to use them. Well, it's a good demo of like all the colors. Anyways, yeah. uh, that's what we had on the show and tell. Yeah, good show and tell. Short and sweet. Yeah. But um, all participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Um, all they have to do is email supportedifruit.com and they get it. Chris, however, is learning Python, so we're sending him out a Python badge. The Python Foundation gave us permission to uh, uh, give out badges, sell badges, yeah. and uh, the Python badge is a big one. Kids are earning this one uh, quite a bit because Python seems to be the programming language of choice for science, for education, and uh, it's just a great glue. Uh, Adafruit's uh, run on Python, all of yes. the hardware stuff that we That's do right. with our shipping system. So, Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Get on the show and tell super easy. Go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit. And for, find the post where I say, hey, comment here to get added to the show and tell circle. Comment there and uh, we'll add you to the show and tell circle so that next week we will be able to invite you to the show and tell. And you'll show up at 930 Eastern Standard Time, whatever daylight savings here in New York, and show off your stuff next Saturday. You are correct, sir. Okay. Uh, next up. What? Yeah. Uh, big article, big ink in the Times here. Rise of the hacker space. You know it's a big deal when the New York Times finally get around to it. Yeah. Um, so hacker spaces, we've been following this forever. Uh, they're talking about uh, one big workbench, <laughs> all these people. Um, the, uh, yeah. the article, it's uh, linked on the, um, the, the Adafruit uh, blog, but what they do is they uh, talk about people who are making hackerspaces, how to form hackerspaces. Don't forget to look at learn.adafruit.com for uh, Eric's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, great series of articles on uh, forming a hackerspace. Uh, interesting how it worked out. Um, there's commercial entities like tech shops, and then there's things like makerspaces that makes part of, and then there's hackerspaces, self-form. Um, what a neat thing. Like, who knows how this is going to go in the yeah. next 10 years? Because it's been about, like, you know, I'd say eight maybe seven, eight years since, like, hackerspaces started um, kind of drifting into the U.S. There was some in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Altman doing a lot of uh, important work in that space. Anyways, great article. Check it out. And speaking of, um, we keep adding hackerspaces every single week. There's always a new hackerspace. You can look at the hackerspace Yeah, map. there's, like, a new hackerspace at least twice a week. Yeah, so the, what we decided to do, um, we actually did this at a Maker Fair. We made a big announcement. We said, if you're a hackerspace, we're going to treat you like a reseller and distributor. And all you have to do is uh, send us a link to your hackerspace, let us know that you have members, and you can buy stuff as a distributor to help you fuel your hackerspace. So yeah. a lot of them will buy stuff at great discounts, you know, up to 40% for some things. And they'll have workshops, they'll sell it into their um, mm -hmm. hackerspace, but they'll also just do a group buy. So, yeah. you know, one person is the treasurer. It, yeah. yeah. So it's really great really because well. they can do workshops and they buy the kits at distributor prices and they save money. Yeah. And the other thing that it did was it encouraged people who were kind of on the fence of starting a hackerspace. They're like, well, you know what? I can get five people together because I just want to buy a bunch of electronics at a decent discount for made food anyways. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. So anyways, that's hackerspace map. Next up, Lady Ada, did you know that there's a... Uh, uh, this is actually in New York, uh, the corner of Ohm and Ampere. I kind of want to go there now. It's in the Bronx. Yeah, there's a great uh, blog called ScoutingNY.com, and uh, this is an interesting blog. Um, according to the Parks Department, the land was donated to city by Isaac Leopold Rice, inventor and president of Electric Storage Battery Company, and later the Electric Boat Company and the Electric Vehicle Company. Because of his background, the city chose the donation of purpley named streets. All right. Very cool. It's the Volt Corner. It's the Volt Corner. So I thought that was kind of neat. Okay. We should go check that out. Speaking of, uh, this is kind of a follow-up. Another New York. Well, yeah. Um, the the uh, Tesla memorial is going to happen. Supporters of the uh, Tesla um, folks who rallied together, they announced that they um, are raising $10 million, and it looks like they'll be able to get a, a museum and educational memorial for Tesla. This is actually going to happen. That's cool. Yeah. Big deal. A lot of people on the Internet who <laughs> really wanted this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be at Warden Cliff, which is in Long Island. So we'll definitely, we'll probably go to the opening if this happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be here in five years. That's how long my lease is. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up, uh, this is kind of a big deal in the world of 3D printing. Maybe I should have put this in our 3D Thursday ca uh, category. But oh, 
whatever. Uh, whatever. Um, Staples is going to sell 3D printers. Yeah, they're I think gonna, this is very interesting. They're going to be selling the Cubifies. Yeah, they sell they sell a lot of printers and printer ink and computer stuff. So yeah, they're going to sell uh, 3D printers. We sell a 3D printer. They're going to sell 3D printers. Yeah. yeah. A million a years limited, ago, a limited number of staples. We'll see if there's one in New York. We'll yeah. go and check it out. So a million years ago, I wrote an article on Make about how uh, this is when FedEx and Kinkos merged, mm-hmm. and now they're just called like FedEx Bit Store or something. But I had said, and this was a long time ago, before like I, I don't even think. The replicator was out yet. No, this was back in like single yeah, day. Yeah, cupcake days. This was a long time ago. Cupcake era. And I, I had said, you know, if it, the, there's going to be a company that moves into this space, and the one that does is going to really um, make the marketplace. I had thought that FedEx Kinkos, because they were doing so many smart things in tech, that they were going to be the one to have first something service. like a Shapeways or yeah. Pinoco, where you send it to the service bureau and it prints out, and then eventually have something like this. Which is interesting to me is Staples managed to be the one. Yeah. Because the, the margins and everything that Staples uh, sells uh, as far as technology, those things are shrinking. Like, you know, selling laptops and computers and, and lots of other technology things, that's a hard sell. The yeah, margins they, are they great. They do sell, like, you know, if you, it, it's like in many cities, not in New York. In New York, we have, like, J&R and B&H. But, like, in many cities, it's like if you want to get a hard drive or a printer or even, you know, like a scanner, you go to Staples. Yeah. I mean, like, you're not going to go to Best Buy. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting know. to watch these, pl- these players in the space because, you know, um, the FedEx Kinko's place, you know, you go there if you need a quick print job or something like that. That yeah. Staples has opened up that as a service bureau. So it's, it's interesting to watch this these uh, players go into the space. So 3D Systems owns Cubify. Cubify is the one that they're selling in there. Yeah. So we'll see what other 3D printers um, are being sold. Um, in a retail environment, and who knows if this retail environment is even a place where people would want to do that. So, yeah. if there's any in New York, that means there's a MakerBot store that you can go get a 3D printer. There's a Shapeways. There's a um, there's the other 3D printing store. Yeah, there's another 3D town. printing store, and then there would be a Staples. So, like you know, this is a, like this is crazy. You can yeah, actually go anywhere and get a 3D printer. I think probably at least one Staples in New York will have it. There's a couple of them. Yeah. There's a couple of 24-hour staples, too, so, like, you could, you could like, four in the morning, if you're on, like, a bender and you're like, I need a 3D printer! Yeah. You could go and get a 3D printer. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, let's print out tequila <laughs> shot glasses, um, you know, yeah. Um, all right, next up. Some historic news. Okay, the so first sorry. webpage returns to CERN. So the very first webpage in the world is now back. Okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like, by the way. Yeah, that, that looks about what the internet looked like. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So it's back. And uh, they also, in the article, they also go over uh, Next Computer, which is my favorite computer this of computer all time. This computer was written on? Yeah, this is, uh, they're restoring the actual uh, Next that was uh, uh, home of the web page. And uh, once I saw that, um, I noticed that day there was a bunch of people looking at our tutorial um, who uh, have uh, old Next systems. So if you ever have a, a Next keyboard, which I think is one of the best keyboards ever made, you can have it work with modern equipment using an Arduino Micro. Yeah, we, I made you that adapter, and you don't even, you're not even typing emails on it anymore. You like pulled it out for a bit. Yeah, I was it using out. it for a while. It's yeah. really loud. <laughs> it's like, yeah. good good chunk. You can hear it all the way across the office. Yeah. All right. Okay, next time for packet. Uh, packet the mailbag letters. We get letters every single week. This week, this letter comes from Kushal. Thank you for a very quick reply. Hats off to Adafruit and your team. I never got this much quick reply from any company. Thanks for the information. All right. We respond to emails very fast. fast. And we take care of things very fast. Fast. All right, next up uh, Adafruit Learning System. Some tutorials went into the uh, Adafruit Learning System this week. The big one, the fun one. The one that we're really excited about. How to make your own Hal. That's right. So, uh, yeah, how about, it's not a rendering. Yeah, how about you show uh, Hal? So, this is a project from Paint Your Dragon, who's in the chat right now. Thanks for sending us the Hal. We've got two made. So, he still has one. Now we yeah. have one. And it's really beautiful. I mean, it looks really great. <laughs> um, there's this really nice, like, sticker that looks super official. It's got our uh, button that, of course, when you press it, does stuff. And on the back, there's um, an Arduino and a wave shield, so it can play audio. And um, I have it hooked up to some external speakers because this speaker is not loud enough to reach all the way to the camera, although it is, it's fairly loud. Um, and then, yeah, you got this gigantic button mounted, and the whole thing is this sort of laser cut piece. And yeah, it's like super cool. And there's um, the bezel looks great too. Right? This yeah. is just the bezel that the, the um, button comes with, and it's silver painted. 
So press the button. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Yeah, I was kind of a jerk. Um, <laughs> it's puzzling. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the howl, and it's fun because you can press a button. We're gonna mount oh. this onto the picking place. Someone wants to know if the Howl button can be turned on or off. Yes, you have to pull his memory chips, and then these things daisy daisy. We don't want to do that. Yeah, but yeah, you can you you can, you, uh, you can turn off the light if you want well, to. Turn them off, hold on. You want to do that? Thank. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, it's no Dave. works. It's just the LED. I'm afraid I can't do that. Yeah. But it's just an LED, so yeah, you can uh, you can connect, disconnect or connect it. I think in this yeah. one it's just hard. To and why don't you show the back on the overhead? I mean, it's all full of stars, but um, uh, oh, I have to unplug it. Yeah, so that's what the back looks like. Okay. So anybody can make these. There was replicas online for like five hundred dollars that didn't even work that well. This one you could build for like. And it's you know, cool because it's like bucks. you can build it and customize it. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, this could be your doorbell. You know, you um, could do this. So yeah, you've got uh, a wave shield here with your classic, you know, Arduino and, and, and um, volume control. This is the gigantic button. It's a really big button. It's kind of deep. But, you know, it's okay. I mean, this doesn't go that deep, but you can make it um, much deeper. And then there's a uh, one-watt speaker over here. And then you can roll off a battery, too, but we just um, got it off of a 9-volt. Yeah. Yeah, this is the front. You can see the really nice silver um, spray painting. That's kind of the secret. So Pink yeah. Dragon is a master prop maker. This is a really good prop. Okay. Let's keep moving. All right, next up, Wearable Wednesday. Every Wednesday we have all sorts of cool things in the wonderful world of wearable electronics. There's been a parade of people through here lately from crazy venture capitalists and CTOs of uh, the biggest banks in the world. We've had a, 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 a parade of people. I guess that's And we make them wear the tie. No, we don't. We don't make them wear all the wearable electronics. But what's interesting is how um, fascinated they are and what they, they think this is a... Uh, big growth market, so uh, we're very interested in this. So I picked okay. up a couple projects that I thought. This is the the TARDIS dress that uh, someone made. This is really beautiful. I thought that dress. was neat. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is a test pattern um, uh, suit that I thought that was really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's electronic, but I, I really like this. This is a yeah. cool style. Um, but then um, the thing that we wanted to show this week was our new video about the Adafruit wearable GPS. And this is a video from Becky Stern, our director of wearable electronics. Becky, take it away. Ever think your code could guide you home? The easiest way to add location information to your wearable electronics project is the Flora GPS. This easy to sew round PCB houses the Adafruit Ultimate GPS module with built-in data logging for mapping your dog walk or jog to the park. It connects to the Flora main board easily with our premium stainless steel thread. You can use the GPS as a real-time clock by adding a coin cell battery, which also helps it fix on a location faster when you power it up. The Flora GPS can track up to 22 satellites and can get location updates 10 times a second. You can either attach an external antenna or use the one it's got inside. To get you started, try our GPS jacket project. The complete tutorial will walk you through creating your own location-aware outerwear and hopefully inspire your own Flora GPS project, which we hope you'll share with us in our weekly show and tell on Google+. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel. On all right, all so right. Um, we're doing all these little mini videos to show the entire sensor lineup. Uh, Flora's really taken off for us. All the different sensors that people can do, um, they're starting yeah. to come up with some yeah. really cool stuff. So we'll show... I'm, I'm designing a wearable platform that I always wanted. Yeah. Because I've been like working on wearables for like a decade yeah. and we had nothing 10 years ago it was yeah. just awful i mean it wasn't awful but it was just like it was just gigantic chunky batteries and like computers and bags and and now we can actually do so much stuff with like yeah. a little microcontroller and some add-ons so i'm really excited yeah all right uh next uh uh and this is an in project uh, in progress project this is an angler fish that uh, is part of a, a new effort, a new thing that we're doing. This is actually on a pair of shorts. Yeah, it's an um, so this is a sneak project. peek. Sneak peek it was on Instagram, so that's why it's, it's okay to share. Coming at you. Next it's up, crazy teeth. Three D Thursday, all things in the world of three D. So uh, there's a, uh, a Coney Island Scanorama, and what they're doing is using a Connect. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, remember the time that Microsoft was threatening to sue us because we uh, showed how to hack to Connect and do stuff? Suckers. That was fun. Um, but they actually uh, did a great job. They um, uh, came around and they thought it was a good idea after they saw um, all the cool stuff that came out. And now a lot of people are using the Connect 
for um, some scanning. So here's some of the scans that folks were able to do. Um, and like, what was this from? Was this just like a project or like who was doing this? Uh, this is just a, a group of people. Um, you can uh, look at the link on the site. It's this Coney Island uh, 3D portrait studio um, that uh, uh, it's the great uh, Fredini's <laughs> Coney Island Scanorama. And then here's one of the things that uh, comes out afterwards um, after you uh, get your your scan. Kind of so, cool. um, and that, there's a replicator. Yeah, and so the other bit of news that we had this week was uh, the MakerBots uh, yeah, Adafruit Edition back. are back in stock. So let's keep okay, moving right Thursday. along. Yeah, it's 3D Thursday. Uh, next up, Pi Day. Every week celebrating cool Raspberry Pi projects in the world. Um, uh, two fun ones I wanted to share. This one, someone made this crazy water-cooled Raspberry Pi, and it just looks cool. It looks like... Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there was this good Star Trek Next Generation episode called Emergence, and, like, the ship, like, birthed a entity, and, like, they had to figure it out. It was really neat. Anyways, what does that have to do with this? It looked like it. Oh. Uh, next up, uh, this is a My Little Pony um, Raspberry Pi... Uh, lunchbox uh, kind of command center. Yeah, it uses a bunch of our stuff, which is why how I saw it. Yeah. Um, it uses our 7-inch screen. Yeah, this is really, the screen that it uses. Really nice screen. It's actually really good for a laptop. If I was going to build a small laptop, I would use the screen because it's um, it's like super bright, super high resolution, and uh, IPS, so it works from like any angle. Yeah. And then um, next up, uh, we have a new series of posts that um, I'm really happy with. This is uh, Community Corner. And what we do is we round up all the stuff that's going on in the Adafruit community each week. And so this week, I'm going to pop over to, we're going to show two things. Uh, one, this is the post. So if you ever wanted to kind of get a, a glimpse of all the stuff that's going on in the world of Adafruit, um, here's uh, the Ham Radio Arduino book. Um, we had folks in the community post up about that. Um, this is uh, one of the six-second videos that came in through YouTube. You can check this out. People are doing cool stuff with that. You've got um, another six-second video. This is using the bare conductive paint in an art installation. When you kiss, it takes your photo. Um, here's a, a, a fun Doctor Who project using the flora. Um, here's a cat with a resistor. Um, cats love uh, gravity. They love knocking stuff off. Um, here's a GPS Hello. glove um, that will uh, light up. Does, but it lights up. Yeah. Uh, here's a really cool uh, robo photo booth using an Arduino Leonardo. Um, it just goes on and on and on. This is from the Red Bull Creation Project. Um, this is a camera slider using some of our stuff. Um, this is uh, one of our resellers. Uh, they got they, they sell a lot of these plushies, the Circuit Playground plushies, and it just it just goes um, on and on. Um, so if there's anything that you're posting up uh, anywhere in the world of the Adafruit community, we have that here. Speaking of, the um, six-second Adafruit contest is going on right now. You can win 600 bucks just by making a six-second film, tagging it. It's uh, adafruit.com slash 6x, and you'll be able to, uh, uh, and, uh, someone can maybe post up the link. Um, we have uh, one $600 prize and six $60 prizes. The deadline is Monday at 6 p.m., so you still have a shot. Um, here's some of your competition, though, just to give you an idea. Here's one that just came in today that I thought that was a lot of fun. That's a flora and a pulse sensor. Um, you've got things. Uh, uh, this is a really neat one, too. Underwater um, uh, robot. So if you ever wanted to kind of go on a shopping spree, Inside of Adafruit. Yeah. Uh, I know why. Okay. Uh, I know why. Okay. <laughs> More robots. More stuff. Yeah. Um, these are all the things. Um, here's a fun Hal costume. Speaking of Hal. Okay. <laughs> all right. So there you go. All right. Okay. Lots of lots of good little videos. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, before you do new products, code is CERN. Ten percent off everything in stock. Play data. Yes, including in stock. all the things I'm about to show. Yeah. Okay. It is new product time. Do 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 do. We're gonna zoom through these. We got a lot. Okay. All right. First up, we've got this little card. Oh yeah, this is just a eight gig micro SD card. Uh, it comes with a adapter for SD for people who wanted a bigger 
drive than just the four gig ones that we carry. Now I have eight gig. Yeah. <laughs> Comes with a little uh, SD reader too. Okay. Next up. Cables. Splitter cables. We got cables. Yes, cables. Yeah. Do you want me to show these on your head? Well, I mean, I think that the we have the two and four. Yeah, um, they're kind of like that. And uh, they look like underwater creatures. John did some great photos yeah, of this. Some, they're squiddy. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go to the overhead. Not fast. Okay, so this is the, um, oh, hello. Yeah. Give me a second. Come on, camera. You could do it. Go, camera. Yeah, sometimes when it gets out of focus, you just have to put your hand. I did, I did. And get it in focus. That's weird. There you go. You're all set. Okay, great. Um, this is a two-way <coughs> water table. So it's got um, a jack on one side, um, and you can plug in, you know, your the 9 volt or whatever, 12 volt power supply into here. And then uh, now you've got two. And uh, there's this nice molded connector here and they're nice molded um, cables. So they're really good. And then we also have a uh, four cable version. So if you're like, hey, the two cables is not enough. I need more. This has four cables, so more expensive. It's got this like, big chunky connector. And yeah, it's very handy. This is very handy. I use them all the time, actually. Yeah. These and the uh, switchers. That we yeah. Have. Um, I just like these because for um, workshops and for uh, students and for educators, these are super handy. Yeah. Because you can um, have all of the things plugged in yeah, while they're doing stuff. Supply. Yeah, you just need so one power supply. So you can multiply. Also, if you have a project, you don't have to. You, don't, you yeah. only have one plug. It's Do handy. you happen to know what the uh, current rating for these are? Um, a couple amps. A couple amps. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great news. If you're into couple amps. Okay. I am. Yeah. Next up, we've got these super cute EL inverters. Yes. These are, um, I've not seen these elsewhere, Lady Ada. Yeah, we got these for projects. Yeah. And I'm cool with having them. They're very small EL inverters. And so the trade off is they're very small, small enough that they can be used for really mm -hmm. um, light wearables, but they don't can't drive a lot of EL. So maybe we'll show on the overhead. Yeah. Yeah, the, the amount of EL that they can drive. It's only 50. Centimeter. Oh, yep. that's me. Yeah. Ah, there's my hand. So this is the um, AAA inverter. So there's a AAA battery inside. Um, turn this off. And then um, you can put this back, and then I'll put this on full mode. And so, yeah, yeah it'll light up the EL, but it, it will only run about 50 centimeters, which is about this much. Yeah, and uh, can, can I say this for a second? So one of the reasons, because um, this is one of the things that I wanted to get in the store for a while, one of the reasons that we were stocking this is because for wearable electronics projects, you actually um, don't want a giant inverter, and you may only need to do, like, what if you just wanted, like, you know, a very subtle accent on a jacket, or if you wanted, you know, just one thing that goes down the, the side of, uh, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, this can power um, a little square, it can uh, power... Lots yeah. of different things, and it's very it's very lightweight. Um, unlike the big e EL inverters, it doesn't make the same noise because it's it smaller. Does. It is smaller. Yeah. It, it is it is slightly audible. If it was next to your ear, you would notice it. Yeah. You want to go back to the yeah, other? Yeah. Okay. You uh, Yeah. You well, totally grabbed this from me. So yeah. Anyway, so this is a, a fifty centimeter to show you. It can also drive um, a, a ten centimeter by uh, one centimeter long EL tape, but I don't have any tape in here, so it can't do um, and then this is an even smaller one, and these are also don't run for very long. They only run for like three hours. Um, and this is a uh, coin cell version, and it has a little button instead of a switch, and it's not as powerful, but it can drive also 50 centimeters of EL. And um, here is the uh, coin cell in there, 20, uh, 20 millimeter diameter coin cell. So it's been Drive 50 centimeters for a couple hours, um, not for a long time. Um, if you need a really strong inverter that will run for a really long time, I would suggest the AA inverter. Yeah. This one, though, is good for team projects. Like when you really need something that's thin and light. Just yep. Job. All right. And as someone noted, um, all of these things come in beautiful Adafruit black. When we talk to factories, we have to make sure they get the perfect shade of black, and all of these things are in Adafruit black. Okay. Next up, um, we've got these uh, fun uh, LED ribbons. Okay, yeah, more, yeah, a lot of little mini light up things showed up today. Um, so, yeah, these ribbons are kind of interesting. Um, we have two colors of ribbon. We got, we actually come in multiple LED colors, but we decided to start with white because white kind of goes with everything. 
So we have on white ribbon and black ribbon. Um, and they're also really small. And what was really interesting about this is it's actually a fabric ribbon. So I'll show them the overhead. I think we'll be able to maybe see it pretty easily. So it's actually a fabric ribbon. It's a completely soft fabric ribbon. And then um, we'll get some close-up photos hopefully on Monday. But there's a little dot of um, epoxy that covers an SMT LED. And then there's a stainless steel, um, not really wires. They're like they're basically thread um, that run, or maybe like a really um, stranded wire. So this is as, as a thread. It runs along the edge, so it's completely soft and sewable. And then there's a really awesome little uh, battery holder controller, um, and you press it and uh, they light up. So you have white on white, and then um, it goes through blink mode, and then it goes through slow blink mode, and then it goes through this sort of like pulsy mode, and then it um, goes through like, it's either a really, really slow pulse, or it's just like, I think it's half as bright, I don't know. <coughs> and then off, and then yeah. on again. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the battery holder is a pretty interesting design. It comes with uh, two little coin cell batteries. I can't really see them, but they're in there. And then you lift this off, and then you can see there's a switch. And it is possible to cut the ribbon, and then it slides in, and there's a little, little kind of makeshift clamp that clamps it in place. So if you want, you can cut the ribbon down easily, and if you buy extra battery packs, you can um, you know, reuse those pieces. Um, not too difficult to do, but uh, you know they don't tell you how to do it in the manual because they're like that's so complicated. It's like okay, we'll just like cut the ribbon and you slide it in and you, and you clamp it down. So we have that, and then we also have it um, with white LEDs on black. And so I think what's really nice about this is because it's so soft and it's also washable. It's not waterproof, but it's washable. Um, like don't run it while it's wet, but you can uh, you can wash it and dry it off. Um, it's really easy to sew onto anything, yeah. Um, and it's super flexible, so you can wrap it around anything, and it has like you know any diameter you want. You know, you can wrap it around something very slim, or sew it to the edge of you know shoes or yeah. hats or gloves. Yeah, this is kind of like universal wearable LEDs and uh, <clears throat> an easy to use package. Yeah. So. Yeah, very easy to use, and you can see you can kind of do whatever you want with it, and it'll just keep working. So. Um, super soft and flexible, so this is the light texture. We also have uh, just the battery packs available. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'll show you the photos of the battery packs. Okay. So let's switch to that. So we got um, just the battery packs if you want them. Yeah, with a controller. And they come with batteries too, it's kind of nice. We also have batteries in the store if you want more batteries. Yeah, I got that. Okay. All right, uh, next up, uh, Beagle and Black was in stock and then out of stock, sold through. Yeah. So that came in. We'll get more next hmm. week. A little so, more next week, uh, Beagle Bone Black. And with that, we also have an update to our Beagle Bone Black case. Yes, and I can show on the overhead the change. We can also show these photos, which are nice photos. We also retook the photos yeah. of this lovely case. Yeah. Paint your dragon design. Why don't you show it on the overhead? <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a it's the same kind of awesome bone ended case, which is super cute. Um, it's got these bone shaped end pieces, which are also great because it keeps it off of your table. Um, yeah. The beagle bone, uh, white or black, screws in. Uh, you can remove the top. If you loosen this, you can remove the top so you can like put stuff in. You can it has a bit of fit, uh, empty space in it, so you can fit some electronics like a photo plate um, on top. The thing that we have added is it now has um, an HDMI cutout. So the previous version did not have the HDMI cutout. Um, now it does, so you can... Um, Plug in an HDMI, micro HDMI cable. That's the only yeah. difference. But, you know, we wanted to sell out of the old version and then we changed over to this new version. So now it's backwards compatible. But also for the new black with HDMI. Yeah. And I guess speaking of BeagleBone Black, we, we've been testing a lot of the Raspberry Pi stuff that we have with BeagleBone yeah. Black. What has been your um, opinion about about how the stuff works? Um, so far, all the stuff I've tested has worked. Um, I've tested the USB console cable. Um, I've tested um, all of our HDMI displays and they all work. So our 7 and 10 inch HDMI displays and pixel key displays all work great with um, Raspberry Pi. Just plug it in and they show up. I don't know if the Raspberry Pi can do 1280 by 700, but you know, it, it down, it's just down samples. I think it can't I mean, do um, The Beagle Bone Black. Sorry, the Beagle Bone Black can't. The Raspberry yeah. Pi can do 1280 by 800. 
and the Beagle in Black cannot. But so it just doesn't have as high resolution. But you do get the full. You get the full screen. screen yeah, the screen is just not as high resolution. It just like down samples it. Um, I'm going to continue trying out more of the um, parts that we have. A lot of things that are just like, you know, work, work. Um, you know, our proto cape from the Beagle Bone White still works. Yeah. Okay. Next up, more big news. Big, big news. We got the Raspberry Pi Model A. Modella. Yeah. And uh, with uh, with it being 10% off, it's like less than 25 bucks or something like that. I mean, like yeah. with everything you get. Um, so anyways, we have them. They are in stock. Um, they're not going to last long, but we do have the yeah, Model A. Yeah, we have a, a couple. Um, the thing about the Model A, um, it uh, does not have Ethernet. I, I personally, I think the Model A is, is an interesting idea. It is cheaper. Yeah. Lower power. It, it's lower power um, because it doesn't have the Ethernet. Even if you're not using Ethernet, the Ethernet uh, Mac Fi still draws power. Um, and now it doesn't because it's not even there. It also only has one USB port. Yeah. Um, it's, also, it's slimmer. Um, but it still has all the other connections, the GPO connections. Otherwise, it's the same. I still fancy the Model B. But yeah. for those who want a slimmer design, maybe lower power, maybe for portable applications, yeah, the Model yeah. A will work great. It's also just a great low-cost way. You don't have to worry about if you put this thing in a you know, low, uh, uh, high-altitude balloon and it doesn't come back to you. Yeah. You know, 25 bucks. It's you, okay. You have $25, uh, $10 less that you lost. Yeah. So, so we now got, we have that. So we and got it works that. with like pretty much everything we make. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up. Oh, this we should just show the uh, photos because it's uh, I'm not going to demo it, but it's basically a, uh, one of our most popular Maxbotic sonar sensors, the um, Easy One, which has a pretty good range and it's um, very high precision. And um, they actually just tossed an FTDI chip on there, so now it has a micro USB port. If you plug it into a computer, it shows up as an FTDI. USB console, okay, yeah. and it just spits out the data. I mean, you could also take a console cable and plug it into a normal um, sonar, and you know that's not too difficult. But for people who just want like the super easy way to do it, this is the easiest way possible to get yeah. distance data into a computer. Yeah. Oh, skipping back to the Pi for a second. Someone wanted to know what are the connectors in the middle of the Pi used um, for? One of them is the camera connector, and one of them is a DSi uh, TFT connector. They're still working on getting a DSi TFT. Yeah. And then those like, are the GPIO. Yeah, GPIO connectors are still there. And there's also like a JTAG type connector. Yeah. Okay. And then um, there's also uh, audio and composite yep. video. The only thing it doesn't have <laughs> is it's missing Ethernet port and one USB port. Oh, and yeah. it has only 256 megabytes of RAM, not yeah. 512. Yeah. But that's it. Okay. Next up. Right about now, we got the paper. That's right. Yeah, so um, we've we got... Have cats in all yeah, sizes now. Yeah, Little so... Cats and big cats. This is a big deal because um, there's there was a bunch of... Uh, well, one, it was really hard to do e and e paper stuff. And then there were some crappy versions that were out there. And we're just like, we're not going to stock something that's not good. So we finally have what we think is the best way to get started with... Uh, e-ink stuff. So, uh, do your thing, <laughs> Lady Ada. Yeah. Um, we also have a tutorial about this in the learning system, which we didn't mention, but there is a, we now have a wiring um, tutorial. Um, so, yeah, we have, we had the 2-inch, which is what we're showing here, and now we also have the 2.7-inch, which is super mega huge, and also the 1.5-inch, 1.44-inch, uh, which is uh, super teeny and cute. So I'll show these on uh, overhead. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, um, maybe you can explain, what actually is e -ink? Because, like, you know, some folks, they've never heard of this before. Yeah, so this is the same stuff that's in um, a Kindle. Well, and you're going to make sure you talk, that, talk oh, loud. So um, it's, uh, these are very thin displays. They're only monochrome, so you can see how thin the display is. It's super, super thin. And they're full graphics, so you can see there's a cat, and then it has some like text that's in display, and you can, you know, invert it. Um, and these are the same kind of displays that are in e-ink readers, like the Kindle. Um, the really cool thing about these displays is if I remove the power, um, the display still shows what it's showing. So it, it, it maintains the image even uh, when there's no power applied, which is much different than like any other display, very few displays do this. It's also extremely daylight readable. The contrast is very good. Um, there is no backlight, however, so you can't read it in the dark. So that's a trade-off. 
Okay. Um, and um, there, this is a, by Pervasive Displays. It's an e-ink holding company. So it's actually worked with a company called e-ink um, to make this stuff. And then here is the 1.5 inch version. So this one is um, much teenier, but you know, it's, you know, the idea is that, you know, you can have multiple different sizes. The, the development board that um, Pervasive su supplies is pretty much the same for all of them. It's just um, how big the display is and the resolution. Okay. And then um, these uh, are connected to an Arduino and they use, um, the, uh, they use a piece of uh, SPI flash to take an image off and display it. So the thing about these displays is they have a very high resolution, um, especially the 2.7 inch, which is like really high res. Um, yeah. It's like 300 by 200 pixels, which is um, or more, no, sorry, more than that. It's too much for a Arduino Uno to buffer. You have to buffer the entire display. So if you have a Mega um, or an ABK or, or probably a Due, we have a system on Due, but we know it works with the Mega, you can actually draw whatever you want onto the screen for an Uno, it can only display these static images that you can load in. So okay. that might be okay if you wanted to like, show, like, do you have like five or six images you want to uh, go through and show one at a time? Um, you can do that in an Arduino. We're working on a version that will allow you to draw anything you want, like you know, square, circles, text, you know. Oh, so these can display things besides cats. Well, this one right now it can only display a cat. Oh, okay. I thought this was just straight up cats. Right That's now it, it is. Okay. Um, but you'll have to uh, check out the tutorial we have in the learning system for how to do that with a mega, and uh, we'll, we'll show more. How about big of that. a buffer do you need for these? To, um, to do stuff? It's like I think you need four k of RAM, three yeah. k of RAM. Okay. So yeah, and Uno only has two, and you need. Half That's why you need a mega. So a mega can do it, um, or and so, yeah. mega also has extra pins. So yeah, mm. then you can draw. But just be aware that it's it's <laughs> e paper. It's not high refresh. So you need one second delay between yeah. displays. So it's not meant for and like fast animations video that like you can't do that on e-paper. Yeah. But what you know what's meant for is what e-readers do, where you display a page Out, of text. Outdoor displays, sun, yeah. reading books. Low power. Very stuff. low power stuff. Um, a messaging, you know, where you have a, a message or a display or a poster, and then it yeah. doesn't change more than every two seconds. So that's the trade-offs, but. Um, you know, there's nothing as low power as e-ink. It is the most low power display available, yeah. and it's very daylight readable. And then, is there any code available for this? Yeah, it's all check out the learning system where we have instructions on how to download the uh, Arduino code. So you're saying that we have an Adafruit learning system that has all this information, all this code, so people can easily get this stuff going. Yes, that's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's what it sounded like. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yes. Next up. More big news. The Arduino Explorer is here. It is in our hands. The wait is over. It's in, I think, Becky's hands. You do not need to go to Radio Shack, which was pretty much the only other place besides maybe like one or two places. The Explorer is here. Okay. I'm going to go back to the other road. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the other road. Okay. Explorer, right about now. We have Explorer. <laughs> um, so this is an Explorer. I'm going to this light. And actually, Mike in the um, chat, by the way, uh, really pioneered a lot of the cool stuff going on with it. Watch the show until afterwards and look at all the stuff that he's been posting. But uh, um, back to Explora. Back to Explora. So the um, the cool thing about Explora, better light. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, the cool thing about the Explora is um, it's this kind of round, happy um, joystick controller like board. Um, it's got a uh, at Mega 32U4, sort of Leonardo, basically, in the middle. It's got an accelerometer, it's got a temperature sensor, it's got um, a buzzer, it has some LEDs, it has a microphone sensor, has an RGB LED, and it has four buttons, and then um, an analog joystick and a slider, and then you can maybe plug it in CFT later. And it's kind of like, if you want to do electronics, you just don't do any wiring, this has like the most popular stuff that people want to get started with already attached to the board. Um, yeah, what's on the see? back? Someone asked what's on the back. Uh, just some information. It says Explora, board model, yeah. FCC, Main Italy. Nutritional values, nutritional stuff like value, that. Nutritional value, 16 calories per serving. Um, so it's really easy to get started. It even comes with a USB cable, which I don't know where it is anymore. We, or something else, 
Um, it has some Tinker Kit connectors for if you want to use Tinker Kit. But um, yeah, you just plug it in, you go. You know, there's no, you know, you don't have to wire anything up. There's no soldering. There's no connecting. You can get started with buttons, analog, accelerometer, uh, color, images, sound, input, buzzer output. Yeah. yeah. And our, our uh, display fits on there. Our display does fit on there. Um, not presently, probably. But um, they're probably also going to release a display sometime later. So I have to see if there's so much stuff going on here. But... Um, Check it out. I think we're one of the first um, online retailers to have this. It was not available for us to purchase until Yeah, now. they're going pretty quick, and they're 10% off right now, so this might... I don't know if we have any more in stock. Yeah. Let's see. Probably have a couple. Yeah, they were going fast when we were on Friday. All right, so that's the Splora. Okay. All right, <clears throat> next up, uh, we mentioned this before. The uh, MakerBots are... Um, we've got, I think, 15 or so left in stock. Um, we got them in. Uh, this is the Adafruit Edition ones. Comes with the Adafruit plate, all the kits, the watch, all the things, a Raspberry Pi, stuff for you to print out. Um, right now, um, it's what's in the background printing um, stuff. Right here, yeah. This is a. Uh, we actually use. What is it printing? Um, this is printing out a. Um, no, it's a Buddha. It's a yeah, it's a Buddha head. Okay. And then um, we have some other things here. This is our watch. Um, our other watch. You know, we have all this stuff that you can. Uh, for now, and we also have a Minty Boost uh, container, and then there's all these fun things that you can do with. Uh, I'm really scared. Want to break that? Oh, it's, not so it's so scary. If it breaks. You just print a new one. Fun things with 3D printers. I'm just, I'm just really so, scared because it's like they, they look they look so intricate. Yeah. So you know, if uh, um, I forgot the exact price, but if it's like you know twenty five hundred dollars, it's two hundred and fifty dollars off because it's ten yeah. percent off. Which is uh, a little painful, but um, <laughs> but, go, but go for it if you guys are really interested. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, this is kind of the star of the show today because uh, this is a, a new product for us that I think is really cool. This is the Flora Color Sensor. Yay! Ooh, it's all, uh, the, all the coolness of the color sensor we had last week. Now small and round. Yeah. Yeah. So right. yeah, this is a color sensor. Um, we found the awesomest chip to do color sensing. It's got an IR cut filter, so it gives you really good, precise, like, what humans think of as, um, color, color, not just what computers and, um, photo cells think of as color. Uh, we put a bright white LED that's a nice neutral color with a, a MOSFET control, and the chip yeah. actually controls the, um, I did this little hack where I connect the, the gate of the MOSFET of the LED to the interrupt pin. Because like, <coughs> on the floor, you don't, have a, you don't want to use the interrupt pin anyways. It doesn't matter. So I can actually control the LED through um, the chip itself. So like it turns on and takes a color reading, and then it turns off the LED. Oh, so cool. you can save power that way. It is, it's a really bright LED because you want to have really good illumination of what your color sensor is. Yeah. And like in the world of industry, they use color sensors for like d determining like uh, if the packaging came out okay, or the side of a box, or if this something is, is ripe for, uh, or not, or yeah, this is used for that. It's also used for um, this can do lux sensing and color yeah. temperature sensing, so it can actually tell you like the color temperature of the light around you. Yeah, it's, it's really Robo robotics, robotics use color uses sensors this. a lot. But we're gonna do it for fashion. We're gonna do it for fashion. Yeah. So one of the projects that we were talking about, and uh, we'll have lots of different variations of this, is imagine uh, Lady Ada has a scarf, and um, the scarf is uh, blue, but, oh, you know, her hair is uh, pink. She would like her scarf to match her hair, so she'll be able to touch the scarf. Um, her hair is pink, then the scarf starts to glow a different color, it turns pink. So we have a photo. Um, we put a green apple on our little floorboard. And if you look, you could see that the color sensor detected that it was a green apple, and then all the LEDs then turned green. Yeah. So we'll go to the overhead. Um, it's hard to see because there's uh, the lights are here. Yeah, we'll still, we'll but we'll still try. Yeah, we have um, an apple. We also have uh, reds show up really well. So um, we'll, we'll do a couple yeah, different ahead. ones, yeah. OK, so we have. Uh Green. Well, that is really hard to see. It is green, but it's yeah, it's green just over the webcam. It's hard to see, but red, red, uh, red will show up a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah see how red. Looks. Red. Yeah. Shows up really well, and then I also have um, this is red handled um, flyers, and then I have pink. It's actually, it does a really good. Yeah, job you can also try to do a, a bluish type thing. 
Okay. Yeah. So it is blue. It's just hard to tell. Yeah, I have a webcam still on. But anyways, we can check out the photos. Yeah, that's like kind of a nice, a nice. You can blue see shade. the blue on the reflection. It's so bright though. Yeah. But um, yes, yeah, so this color sensor um, works really great, and we'll be doing uh, cool projects. Yeah. How far away can it um, detect uh, the color? Um. It can be an inch away, but for the most precise color, you want it right up against it so yeah. that the huh. light is reflecting right onto it. That's the best way. To if it touches, that's the best way to get the, the, the yeah. best color um, sensing I found. Because if it's anywhere above it, there's other light that could come into the sensor, and you don't want that. You want the light that's just bouncing off the object yeah. and detecting. Okay. You can only detect one, one color. That was new products. Yay. All right, so let's answer some quick questions about uh, these and more. Um, don't forget the code of CERN. Uh, question. Would, would the thing that changes color like the squid be powered using the power squid? What? I don't understand that question exactly. Uh, I'm going to keep <laughs> moving. What happens if you show it to a mirror or a sheet of glass? Um, it'll just uh, measure the white um, light that's reflecting off of it. Gotcha. So. Can it do resistor color sensing? Um, the bands and register are pretty small. I would, I would measure something that's at least like five millimeters by five millimeters. Yeah. Squids change color. I mean, if you hold a squid up to it, it'll detect the color of the squid. Yeah. But it's like, they're usually very slimy and they would, um, they probably kind of damage your electronics. Yeah. If people don't make it, I think octopus are going to be the next dominant species on the planet. We're talking about squid. I mean, then they're kind of, I mean, they're. I and mean, then they're in the ocean. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll get out of the ocean and start walking around. Because they're kind of dexterous. They can, like, you know, they need to be able to make tools and spaceships and fire and stuff like that. Hal? Oh, I, have to plug <laughs> I have to plug this in. So. Yeah. All right. Someone wants to know, these headers can be attached to the... This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Hal always says Goodbye. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can these headers uh, be attached to the micro, Lady Ada? Yeah, the 20 sure. pin? Go yes. For it. So, for the person who asked, they can. Uh, next up, any plans for touchscreen products? Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, we have the touchscreens for um, 2.8 inch shields, uh, TFT shields for the Arduino has touchscreens. And we're always looking for more touchscreen stuff. When we get stuff that we can sell you, we'll uh, get in store. Yeah. What would you recommend to someone uh, wanting to progress past Arduino? Uh, pick up a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. I don't have enough information. <laughs> um, so we're starting to see people get involved with like very basic electronics. Um, they might use like a Mickey Makey or little bits, and then they go up to a Arduino. kit, or they'll yeah. go up to a kit where they solder stuff, like a TV be gone. Yeah. Then they go into an Arduino, do a lot of physical computing, and then that's where things can branch off. If they want to learn computer programming, like actually on a device, they'll get something like a Raspberry Pi, use um, Occidentalist and our um, Web IDE for instance, and learn how to do Python. And then for something a little bit more powerful, they might go to say something like BeagleBone Black. And then we also have things all the way up to F FPGAs. But we're starting to yeah. see that as a uh, as, you know a ladder that yeah. people can go up. So that's the longer answer. Um, what micro could I use to build into some, something some glasses? Sunglasses. You could probably use the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Arduino Micro. Yeah. yeah. Without headers, that's, that's, that's the smallest, thinnest Arduino we have. Uh, will we carry the Raspberry Pi camera? Yeah, we probably will. It's hard because with the Pi stuff, um, there's always availability issues, and there's also um, they price it um, where there's no margins, so you always have to figure out the uh, great uh, uh, creative business models so you can um, stock it. But um, yeah, I mean we have the Model A. I don't think anyone else has a Model A besides us. Yeah. So we figured something out. Uh, next, uh, uh, what do you think about the you do on Kickstarter? I haven't seen that. Um, what is the update info on BeagleBone? So I think they want to know... We'll have more BeagleBone Blacks next week. Yeah. All right. That's all we know. Yeah. Question. Touchscreen plus e-ink plus stylus. 3D print one equals notepad? Um, 3D print? Need some more words in that one, I think. Yeah, I think you need... Add, yeah. add some connective tissue <laughs> to your question. Uh, next up. I was really interested in Be Going Black, but I found out it uses JavaScript and was put off that because I don't know it. I cannot see the infinite possibilities with it either. What would you do? You don't have to use JavaScript. You can use any programming language. Yeah. You can use Python, C, C++. 
I think there's just some examples of JavaScript, but you don't have to use JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, what hardware do you recommend for a heads-up display? I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't have any suggestions for a heads-up display. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, like Google's investing a ton of money in that. You can look at all of Steve Mann's work on uh, heads-up displays. Yeah, I, don't there's, any, I don't think there's any makers of heads-up displays. Yeah, there. there's also uh, the, like, the sporting companies that have, like, the heads-up displays for sports and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, next up, best uh, coding language to teach an eight-year-old, eight -year -old, look at Scratch. Yeah, check out Scratch. Look at Scratch. Uh, next up, uh, 3D printing a stylus to use on the touch screen, then use that with an ink display to make a notepad. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. I don't Is, think you need to 3D print the stylus, though. You can just use any stylus. Yeah. Um, is that a gigantic um, uh, roll of bubble wrap in the background? Yeah, we go through bubble wrap quite a bit. Almost as fast as toilet paper. Bubble wrap and toilet paper have a race to uh, which one runs out fast. One's bubblier. One's bubblier. All right. And have you seen Spark Core on Kickstarter? No. We not, have not. We don't. We don't keep. We don't hang out on Kickstarter. We've been running a company. There's a lot of Kickstarters. Yeah. Al. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Ah, okay. So. All right. And then, can you put a big uh, clock in the background so if I could see if I have lag? Well, it's 10:58 right now. <laughs> You'll know if you have lag because at eleven o'clock we stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Can you stack the um, piezo elements to get more extreme temps? Oh, the uh, the the Peltier. Sorry, the Peltier, Peltier one. Peltiers. Um, can you do that? I don't think so. I think you would just be better off getting a better heat sink. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, next up, uh, how hot can they get without damage? The Peltiers. Yeah. Um, well, usually it's, it's not it's not the the temperature damage. It's the, if the, if they get if you don't dissipate the heat, um, the temperature neutralizes because the, the heat differential is over a very small area. So I mean, it can it can you know eventually just neutralizes, so it doesn't get much hotter. But you know, I wouldn't get it much hotter than like eighty degrees cent you know, centigrade. Can the uh, Explorer use any standard shields? No, it's not Arduino shield shaped. Oh yeah. Can't do it. That has most of the stuff you want on there already. Yeah. I think it was meant not to be an Arduino. I think they thought really hard about it and they decided, hey, you know, instead of just making it like another Arduino compatible, it would be something else. Okay. Uh, is it possible to run a server on the Pi with decent speeds? Yeah, people have done it. Yeah, we have a servo tutorial, a couple yeah. actually, on the system. And then any plans to stock DC motors with gearboxes? Um, we're checking some out. Uh, none, no models or plans at this time. And then, uh, how accurate are the DS1307Ss? They're fine. Okay. Um, I guess apparently people are uh, looking on eBay for how replicas, and they're not that great. Yeah, we have a full tutorial on how to make these. I'm sorry, Dave. I don't have enough information. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, he does. It's a <laughs> learning system. Yeah. Um, so Hal and I are going to uh, go out tonight. I'm just going to bring him the bar. Sorry about this. <laughs> I know it's a bit silly. Yeah. Um, all right. So it's uh, now time to do a uh, uh, trivia question. Oh, okay. Trivia question time. Trivia question time. It's 11 o'clock. we got to okay, get okay, out of okay, here. Okay, we got to go. Okay. Trivia question time, lady. What are the rules? The rules are if you've entered this lovely trivia question contest before, you cannot uh, enter again. We only have one winner per lifetime. <laughs> um, the first person to type in the correct answer like exactly the way we want it is the winner. Yeah. Um, what's the prize? The prize for this week um, is going to be an Esplora. This Esplora yeah. is yours. Big deal. All right, here comes the question. Type in the full URL of the first web page that we talked about, the first World Wide Web web page, the one that they're all celebrating, the one that they're doing. Type it in, full URL. It's the one that they just put back up. They're making sure it's there. I showed a picture of it. All you have to do is figure it out. You can Google it. You can go around. You can find it. And the winner is Michael J. Bell. That's right. Info.cern.hypertext.www.theproject.html. Congratulations, Michael J. Bell. You won an Esplora. I have a www is in capital letters. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. That's right.
So, congratulations. Email support at adafruit.com and you will get an Esplora in the mail. Special thanks to everyone who was in the show and tell. Awesome yes. show and tell tonight. Uh, special thanks to all the staff who showed up Thank from you, Adafruit. John Janeer, Paint Your Dragon, George Graves, and anyone else I may have uh, not recognized their um, name in here. Um, big show, as usual, coming up next week. Lots of cool stuff. Um, some fun media things that's coming up soon. We just There's a lot going on. A lot going on. Um, and with that, we'll see everybody next week. Here is MOSFET. Uh, this is when we were moving some stuff. He uh, stood on our suitcase. We always have to have a cat photo. I think photo. this is when we were going to Maker Fair. It was Maker a few Fair years ago. It was Maker Fair last year, I believe. No, that was two years ago, at least. Mm, maybe. maybe. No, maybe, no, maybe. no, no. That, that's a young MOSFET. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, here is your moment of uh, the... Oh, don't forget to enter the contest, folks. It's like... Two days left. Two days left. There's only six seconds. Here's your moment of Zener. Yeah. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore.